I am Professor Fred Ogola. I'm the president of Linda Jamin. Today we are issuing a statement upon submitting a petition to National Assembly regarding the conduct of the Director of Public Prosecution that has appeared in public to have defended the governor of Nairobi who is allegedly accused of so many corruption cases saying that because they are fellow lawyers he cannot be prosecuted. So first of all, let me give you the background to this case. Remember, Renson was appointed Director of Public Prosecution on 28th of September 2023, following an interview by Public Service Commission, and he was vetted by the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of Parliament, JLAG. This petition is therefore presented to this Honorable House of the National Assembly to deliberate given that According to CAP 185, the primary purpose of this act is to ensure that state officers respect values, principles, and requirements of the Constitution. In fact, according to Article 75 of the Constitution of Kenya, it is very clear that you must be able to conduct yourself and behave, whether in public or private life, even if you are doing something private, the people associated with any public office must avoid the following. Any conflict between personal interests and public or official duties. Also, they should never compromise any public or official interest in a favor of any personal interest or community interest. They should also be de not demean the office which they hold. And therefore, with all these things, if you do, you'll be contravening Clause 1 of Article 76, 77, and 78. They shall subject themselves to all this applicable to these offices any time they conduct their affairs. At the same time, they are also due to face disciplinary measures in case they violate those things, and they can be dismissed or be removed from office. A person who has been dismissed or been otherwise removed from office on those same measures should never ever be fit to hold public office. So what is the context of the behavior of the DPP? During a thanksgiving of the governor's mother, which was attended by several dignitaries, with him also attending, he was in attendance and he spoke. And we found out the director of public prosecution Mr. Renson Ingonga declared support for his alleged corrupt friend whom he claims to share the same community that is His Excellency Governor Sakaja Johnson. That the following are the veteran Swahili verbatim words he mentioned. Alisema wacheni mchezo waluya tuweshimiwe huyu ni governor aliechaguliwa tuko na DPP Mluya yuko pale. Cheza na sisi uone. Na mtu asifikrie uka, uka, utakuja kufanya maandamano na Nairobi na utoe sakaja. Ukipanga maandamano hata sisi tutapanga maandamano. That officer seemed to have tribalized the office of DPP and hence stripping off the honorable office of impartiality hence affecting what is called judicial independence. That by defending an alleged corrupt friend, Governor Sakaja, on a public function organized by the governor raises the following issues. One, are such public servants or state officers supposed to attend and speak in public functions, especially on matters touching on his area of service? Upon making such pronouncements, would the DPP still be fit to hold that office or continue to serve in such a key, important office where nothing short of impartiality is expected? Three, would any Kenyan listening to the cited pronouncements feel they have access to justice either when they don't come from the DPP's community, knows him or is a friend to him? Worse still, would any Kenyan feel free that his case be presented 
before the DPP, especially when it is offending someone from the DPP's community. How does the reputation or image portray the impartiality of DPP in, in discharge of his duties? The fact that there has been so many cases which are produced in court and mentioned as lack of evidence warrant or evidence around prosecution regarding corruption or other criminal activities of powerful individuals, Kenyans will be suspicious that these constitutional offices could be there to clear the corrupt and powerful individuals, but not, but only put weak and poor uh, evidence given those pronouncements. Because I'm very, I'm very sure that the DPP, if there's any case that touches his community from his statements, he will simply clear them out. Therefore, these are the, the ask we ask the National Assembly to look. That the petition be satisfied as urgent and dispense it with first intents because when he continues holding that office, when he cannot be impartial, it means there can be no justice. That the Honorable House immediately commence a serious investigation on this individual and ensures that all corrupt, uh, corruption cases that are presented before him he is able to address them with impartiality. We ask him to be able to follow according to Constitution 2010. And in fact, what I'm trying to simply say is this. By DPP speaking those things in public, attended by officials that are friends, dignitaries that are friends of Sakaja, who also have same measures of alleged uh, corruption, it simply means that there is no impartiality in that court, in that office. And I'm speaking on behalf of Kenyans who have lost trust. That's why we are seeing no one going to court. And if we cannot have justice at the Office of Director of Public Prosecution, it means there can be no prosecution going ongoing. This morning I met a Kenyan who is very concerned that he approached DPP telling him about the cases he has not been investigating lying on the desk. And the DPP told him that he should be able to give one million shillings to him. I am ready to present that evidence in court because I have it. And I want to tell Kenyans, let us not be taken for a right. All I know that currently, all the Justice Department, whether it is DCI, DPP, they are not working for you. They have been appointed to clear individuals who are corrupt. Yet taxes are going up, corruption is going up, which means that all our Kenyan money is going into corruption. And I want to ask the president to move quickly and direct parliament to work, because I'm sure he's the one who directs parliament. I also want to ask judiciary, I am not your investigation officer. Go and investigate that case. Call me, I've given these answers here. I'm ready to provide evidence of all the information going on at DPP. I'm not saying because I want to dis disturb judiciary. I'm a Kenyan. I was born in this country. I've been brought up with the same corrupt judiciary. And sometimes you have gotten justice in that system. So what is the price of justice? For a Kenyan, a Mamamboga, a normal citizen, Wanjiku, how will they afford one million shillings to get their cases to be investigated. Can they organize a big ceremony like the one Sakaja organized so that they can be given justice? For some of us who cannot even afford a lunch, some of us who cannot even afford a ceremony, even some of us are not even wedded, some young people cannot even marry, can they afford to have a ceremony where they are being defended by DPP? How many Kenyans can host DPP in their function? It shows you the far you are from hosting DPP in your own compound is how far just it is to you. And we are very concerned that we cannot allow such tendencies to continue in this country because it looks like every community needs to have their own DPP. So if DPP want to be a DPP for his community, let us have that in the constitution that every community needs their DPP. We have to stop and move away from this thing, Mutuetu, Mutuetu syndrome.
Once you are a public officer, state officer, your work is to serve all Kenyans, regardless of where they come from, age, gender, community, color, or height. Thank you. If you have any question, you can ask. Because how? Maybe I can also I can reinforce. Yes, you can reinforce. Okay. Uh, the remarks by the DPP at the anniversary of uh, Sakaja's mother reflects the lack of honor and dignity that is inherent upon public officers in Kenya as enshrined in the Constitution Article 73. The person holding the office of the DPP is a state officer who is bound by Article 73 of the Constitution and must uphold dignity and honor of that particular officer. These reckless remarks cast doubts on the effectiveness of our criminal justice system. The holder of that office must be able, in accordance with that Article 73, must be able to promote public confidence in the integrity of the office that he holds. But we are shocked that the remarks that were made by the DPP do not promote public confidence in the office of the DPP. This unfortunate remarks and conduct of the DPP represents a deep fracture in our criminal justice system. And we must move with speed to restore the, the office of the DPP. It is a waste of taxpayers' money by the president to go to the United States to uh, uh, parade Kenya's credentials in the fight against graft. If the officer who is entrusted with that office under Article 170, 157 of the Constitution publicly makes remarks that de de denigrate the effectiveness and the dignity and the honor that is incumbent inherently upon that office. So as Kenyans, we have uh, petitioned Parliament to take action, to summon the DPP and take action so that the DPP can be held accountable for those remarks. It is very unfortunate that the war on graft is proceeding by someone who does, is, being, is being championed or being undertaken by someone who does not mean his words when it comes to protecting his kinsmen. Therefore, as uh, the members of the public, we are greatly disappointed and we hope that Parliament will expeditiously to hold the, the holder of the office of the DPP accountable in accordance with the law. Thank you. And if they do not do that within the time limit given, we have to call upon the public. Bunga Lawanainchi will be there. Linda Jamwido, all the members will be there. We shall go to that office and lock it and give keys back to Bunga Lawanainchi. Because this is what we call take our country back to Kenyans. Taking back Kenya to Kenya will begin from that office. When I say we are going to take back Kenya to Kenya, we'll begin by going to any corrupt office, we lock it and keep the keys until the right person is put in that office. And we are not going to, to budge. After that, I'm telling you the next door. The next door is Supreme Court. We have cases against Supreme Court also, which also we are going to go to Supreme Court, take the keys of Supreme Court, and give it back to Wanaichi. Because we are going to take all the keys. The last one will be the present state house. We are going to take the keys of state house and give those keys back to Wanaichi. Sovereignty belongs to Kenyans, so the keys to all officers in Kenya must belong to Kenyans. If they belong to anyone, then that is the Kenyan. Kenya si oyenu, Kenya ni asisi sote. We'll be about finance bill, please. No. Yeah, we, we will go there. So there's a statement I wanted to make about the issue of uh, the issue about the, the taxation. Yes.